Now, I have something wonderful for you, Beverly. Yeah? I have some playing cards right here. I want you to choose six of these playing cards, any six that you want, because uh -huh. we're going to also use some dice. Okay. And, of course, there are six sides on each die. That's the reason you're choosing six cards. Have you got them? Uh, I'm getting the last one. Okay. That's six. We'll put the rest away because we don't need it. You verified? Yeah. Now, I want you to throw these two dice out until you come to some number that you like. Don't let me know. Okay. And then I'll give you the rest of the directions. So don't try to peek now. I won't peek. Okay. That's now, what they all just say. just choose a couple of numbers, okay? Do you like those? Uh, yeah, okay. I like those. Now cover one of the two dies with the cup. Okay. You got it. Now remember the number. Yes. Pick up your pack of cards. Okay. And look down in the pack that number, mm -hmm. the number that is under the cup, and choose that card in the stack. Now remember that card, that's your chosen card. That's my chosen card, okay, right. you got it. Now put the stack together and put the stack in my hand. All right, this hand. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put these cards behind my back for a moment, because you see, I don't know what number is underneath the cup, I hope not. nor do I know what the total will be, but I'm going to put your card in a very magical position. Because you see, I now know that your card is in the position that is equal to the sum of these two numbers. Now you happen to have covered two. Five was out here, so that's seven. seven. Count down seven cards, one at a time. Okay, one, one two, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six. Six, and that's the seventh card. Seven. What was your selected card? An ace. Which ace? Uh, diamonds. Ace of diamonds? Ace Let's of see diamonds. if that's correct. The ace of uh, the diamonds. Ace of diamonds. How about that? Now, you're probably wondering, how did we do it? Well, let me show you how we did it. Now, remember, you chose the card that was second down. To begin with, we'll just, for our demonstration, put the ace in the number two. Oh, there were two aces there. Didn't Tricky. matter. Yeah. Different cards. Okay. Now, you had covered the two. What I did was that after you had looked down and had seen your chosen card, when I put the cards behind my back, seeing that there was a five there, I moved the cards one at a time to the top. One, two, three, four, five. Now then, when I turned around and handed you the cards, we added up seven. Oh. So that when we then returned the cards to the bottom, the five that we could uh -huh. see, one, two, three, four, five, plus the two that was under the cup, one, two, then of course there was your chosen card. Da, 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 da. That's how it's done. You see, that's mathematics. Of course, if we had made a mistake... If we had made a mistake. I could do that and change it into a six, but then of course that's magic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
together we'll measure 180 degrees So next time you see a triangle Just measure its size and you'll see That the figure out its name is as easy As one, two Test your mathematical wits against those of today's contestants on the game show of number smarts and geometric skill. Hi, I'm Reggie Cathy, and welcome to Triple Play. All right. And now, join me in greeting our geometric star in any sky, Miss Cynthia Darlow. Thank you, Reggie. <laughs> thank you, and thank you for joining us today on Triple Play. The object of the game is to get three numbers on the board with their line segments connecting them to form an equilateral triangle. Now, to get a number on the board, we go over here and spin our two wheels. Would you spin the wheel for me, please, Matthew? You get two numbers. You have a chance to multiply or add, and you call out the sum or product of, that, of those two numbers, and that number will light up on the board. The first person to form an equilateral triangle and yell out triple play wins the game. Now on the right wheel, there's a little square one TV. If that number should come up, you can let it be any number you want it to be. Now it's time to meet our contestants. Hi, your name is? Matthew Schwartz. Matthew Schwartz, nice to have you here today. I understand you play tennis. Yes. And collect baseball cards. Mm -hmm. That seems to be really popular among the uh, boys your age. Do you, how many do you have, do you know? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, a lot though, huh? Yeah. What's your favorite? Um. I don't really have a favorite. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you're here with us today. And now it's time to meet Jamie. Jamie, what is your last name? Lynch. Jamie Lynch. And uh, you play a lot of sports, don't you? Yeah, I yeah. like soccer, basketball, tennis. Oh, boy, you're really active. That's yeah. really great. See, I'm more interested in the cute little outfits than the sports. <laughs> but I'm really glad you're here today. Thank it's you. time now to play triple play. Now, I think Jamie won the toss backstage. No, no? I didn't. Matthew did, so you get to spin first. Go ahead. Four, eight. Eight plus four is twelve. Twelve purple. Jamie, your turn. Three, eight. Eight times three is twenty-four. Twenty-four green. Matthew? Five, eight. Eight plus five is thirteen. Thirteen purple. Jamie, your spin. Three, eight. Eight plus three is eleven. Eleven green. Matthew, your turn. Five, ten. Ten plus five is fifteen. Fifteen purple. Jamie, your spin. One, twenty. Five, twelve. Five plus twelve is seventeen. 17 green. Matthew, your spin. Remember to look for those equilateral triangles. Five square one TV. Five plus two is seven. Seven purple. Triple play. Call out the numbers, Matthew. Seven, twelve, and thirteen. You got it! Congratulations! Boy, that was a fast round. That was really old. We have time for a bonus round. Okay, now let's see. Matthew, you went first and you won the game, so Jamie, you get to spin first this time. Four, square one TV. Four plus three is seven. Seven green. Matthew, your turn. Four, seven. Four plus seven is eleven. Eleven purple. Jamie, your turn. One, ten. Ten times one is ten. Ten green. Matthew, your spin. Two, twelve. Two times twelve is twenty-four. Twenty-four purple. Jamie, your turn. Five, twelve. Five plus twelve is seventeen. Seventeen green. Matthew, your spin. Five, twelve. Five times twelve is sixty. 
60 purple. Jamie, your turn. Ooh, this is a good one. Four, seven. Seven plus four is 11. I'm oh. sorry, that number's already covered. Play goes to Matthew. Four, seven. Four times seven is 28. 28 purple. Jamie, your turn. Three, eight. I'm sorry, that's already covered what both of those figures are, so Matthew's turn goes to you. Four, nine. Four plus nine is 13. 13 purple. Ooh, this is an exciting game. Jamie, your turn. One, ten. That's covered, so play goes to Matthew. Six, twelve. Six plus twelve is eighteen. Eighteen purple. Jamie, your spin. Triple play. Triple, Triple play. play. Call out the numbers, Matthew. Sixty, eighteen, and eleven. All right. Okay, that means you won both rounds, right? That's really terrific. Jamie, it was, you played a good game. You. Your strategy was terrific. We Thank have you. a Square One TV sweatshirt for you as a prize. And Matthew, you win a Square One TV sweater. Congratulations. It was a great game. And thank you, everybody, for being here with us today on Triple Play. I hope you'll join us again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>
What is it? A 10-4 convenience store just got robbed. That happens a lot, Sam. So what? The guy sounded like a duck. A duck? Uh-huh. I don't care if he sounded like a rhinoceros. I want this case broken. Yes, sir. Let me know. As soon as we get something, sir. The chief? Uh-huh. He wants those robberies solved. The chief is like a guy with a shirt collar that's too small. Uh-huh. Under a lot of pressure. Well, math matters. I've started a database from your questions. Let me show you what I've got so far. Are we in for a canine and equine presentation? Dog and pony show. Well, take a look at these printouts. Most of the 21 robberies, 22 including the 10-4 store yesterday, were done between 12.30 and 1, and only one robbery per day. Get that information from the robbery reports, Debbie? Mm-hmm. It was all there. Just had to organize it. You said most of them. What about the other robberies? They fall into a time pattern, too. 22 robberies. 15 were done between 12.30 and 1. Four were done between 4.30 and 5 p.m. And the other three were at night, between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. I don't know what that information means, Debbie. Kate, I'm just looking for patterns. If you want specific information, you have to ask me specific questions. I thought your computer was all-knowing, Debbie. George, I told you in yesterday's episode, a computer is only as good as the people who use it. Just kidding, Debbie. She's in crackers. I do know that the robberies committed between 12.30 and 1 were all done during the week, Monday through Friday. What about the other four committed between 4.30 and 5? All on Saturday. The other three were at different times. Do you have any idea whether it was one person or more than one? Most of the victims said it was a man who robbed them. They also said the man was wearing a sport coat, slacks, and a mask. Same coat and slacks? No, but they had one thing in common. Polyester. Polyester? Polyester. You know, Kate. The material that my good clothes are made out of. Debbie, did the victims talk about the robber's voice? As a matter of fact, some did. Six teams said it sounded strange. Like a duck? Some said duck. Some said it sounded like a chicken. Some said a turkey. But most said duck. What about the other six? They didn't mention anything about the voice. Nothing at all? It wasn't in the report, so I called him. And they said? They didn't mention anything about the voice because no one asked them about the voice. What? Like I said, if you want an answer to a question, the only way to be sure to get that answer is to ask the question. You're right, Debbie. But what did the six say when you asked the question about the voice? Three said it sounded like a duck. Hmm. Uh-huh. I see. Three said it was a normal voice. So, let's play What Do We Know. Okay. Let's take a look at Debbie's printouts. We know that there have been 22 robberies. We know 15 were committed between 12.30 and 1, Monday through Friday. And four were committed on Saturdays between 4.30 and 5. And three were committed at night. I just thought of something. What? What? The managers of the three stores that were robbed at night are the three who said the robber talked in a normal voice. You mean somebody else could have robbed those stores? Let's concentrate on the other subset. We know that those 19 robberies were done by someone wearing fashions like George's and who talks like a duck. Right. Let's look for a few more common denominators. Common denominator theory is a good one, Debbie. What do a tire company, hair salons, Fast food chain, gas stations, and convenience store share. Not much right off the top. Debbie, maybe you can add some information about those companies to your database. What questions? 
Maybe they're owned by the same big company. Or maybe they use common suppliers. You know, cleaning services, insurance companies, gardeners, advertising. Or maybe they all use the same office supplies or accountants or, or lawyers. Now I've got something to work with. I'll get right on it. Take a look at these, Kate. Locations of the robberies? Yes. Plus other locations. I don't follow you. Something I was thinking about last night while Martha and I were at the Bel Air. The Bel Air Hotel? Uh-huh. We stopped in for a late repast after the theater. Oh, what'd you see? A play. Look, Kate, the blue dots with the X's are where the six Linguini tire stores were robbed. Uh-huh. But look at these blue dots. These are other Linguini tire stores. How come they weren't robbed? What do you mean? Well, they're in the valley. Why these and not those? I don't know. These are the fast food stores that were held up. Here are about ten more that weren't. I think the same pattern may hold true with the hair salons, too. You keep plotting, George. I want to see a man about a duck. Right. While George checked for similarities in the robberies and Debbie compiled lists of commonalities, I continued to wonder who might talk like a duck. I decided it might be what is called a voice actor, the people who make voices for cartoon shows. I paid a visit to an actor's union in Hollywood. Welcome to GAG. May I be of service? Aren't they ahead of me? Yes, but they're actors. What can I do for you? I'm Kate Monday, MathNet. I'm a mathematician. Well, we haven't had much call for mathematicians since Adam Up went off the air. <laughs> I'm not here about a job. I wonder, could you tell me how many actors GAG represents? Yes, GAG represents more than 113,000. I didn't realize there were 113,000 actors in this town. There aren't. <laughs> this may sound like a strange question, but is there some way you could consult your computer or your files or something? Certainly. Wait. I haven't asked you about the information yet. Of course. <laughs> How busy of me. <laughs> How many of the 113,000 actors you represent can do the voice of a duck? I don't need a computer for that. One hundred thirteen thousand. Quack, 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 and quack. three. <laughs> well, thank you. Break some legs. Any suspects? 113,000. How about you? All these companies have one more thing in common. Their employees all wear uniforms, and they're all from the same uniform service, Stay Pressed Uni. I'll call them. Wouldn't the probability of all those companies taking from the same service be very low? Maybe the drivers. Hello, sir. Kate Monday, MathNet. My size? I'm an eight, but. No, you don't understand. I don't want to rent a uniform. I have one. I'm placing a call to your service with regards to some recent robberies. In talking with the State Press Uni Company, I learned that the probability of all the companies using the same service was very high. It was one. In other words, it was the only uniform company that serviced the valley. No help, Debbie. Did you find out anything else? Uh-huh. They all use the same vendor service. You know, the coffee truck that furnishes coffee breaks? That might give us something. Not really. It's the same man who's had the same route, servicing the same companies for over five years. If he were the culprit, everyone would recognize him. Right. I have one more call to make about another possibility. They all checked out, Kate. Every one of these chains had stores in the valley that weren't robbed. Let's figure out what this could mean, George. Thank you. At last, we may really have something, math folks. What, Debbie? Take a look at this printout. What is it? These are some common denominators of our robbed stores. Hmm, I see. 
see. George, look. They all use the same uniform company. Right, but that doesn't help. Stay Press is the only uniform company that services the valley. They use a variety of cleaners. Right, and they do use the same coffee service, but they all know the driver. Let's look at where they advertise. They all advertise in newspapers. Yes, but different newspapers. Times, Chronicle. Look at their radio advertising. They all advertise on radio. True, but they all advertise on one station. K. Yuck. Interesting. That's what I thought. So I got a copy of K. Yuck's program schedule. Look at this. This is K. Yuck's Monday through Friday lineup. And this is Saturday. They seem to advertise all over the schedule. But look at this. Every one of them advertises on one show, the Bio Duke show. My golly, you're right, Debbie. They advertise on Bio Duke during the week and on Saturdays, too. Yes. And here's something else I found, Math Matters. What? I just talked to the manager of the station and learned something very interesting. I discovered every one of those companies canceled their advertising just before they were robbed. One hundred percent of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. This is PBS. Local broadcast of this program is made possible by...